So how about we do an Unted-like thing here, and I get you all up standing, and let's give it a try. Let's see what we can do, experiment a little bit. Now, I know it's very crowded. It's a theater. It's not a gym. So <laughs> I'm going to ask you, and you're go it's going to be shown here, but just peek at it if you don't understand the instructions. So I'm going to stand here, and I'm going to ask all of you to turn about 20 degrees towards where I'm standing. That is in order to create a little bit more space. And spread your legs a tiny bit. I know there's not much space to spread the legs there anyway. And now bend your knees just a tiny little bit. And just go down to reach with your hands towards the floor. But do it gently. Don't pull hard. See if you can find space to bend down with your hands towards the floor. And come back up. That's it. One time. No more. No need to do. Th By the way, you're amazing. As much as I can see, you're really doing it. Thank you so much. And now... If you were to want to go further down, normally what would you do? You would probably start pulling harder and trying to push harder, hoping to somehow get yourself more flexible. So how about we try something a little different? You guys in the front row turn around and use the same back of the chair as, your, as your, the people behind you. And all of you just turn squarely to, towards me, towards the front. Lean on both hands on the chair. Spread your legs a little bit, bend the knees a little bit, not a lot. And now the movement you're going to be doing is you're going to pull your belly in and round your back and look down at your belly button like it's really interesting. And then arch your back as you free your abdomen and look up. Show your tail, but keep leaning on the chair with straight arms if you can. And now round your uh, back, pull the belly in, look at your belly button, and then arch your back, let the belly free, and look up. Now stop, turn 20 degrees towards me, 20 degrees quickly, we're running out of time here. Bend your knees a little bit and re reach down with your hands and see if you're going a little further down. Holy, yes, somebody said here something. Anyway, stand up again. Lean on the back of the chair again. Just for a little bit. And now, you're going to pull your belly in and round your back, except you're going to turn your head and peek under your left armpit. So you're rounding your back, pulling the belly in and looking under your left armpit, turning your head like that. Then you're arching your back, letting be the belly out and looking over your left shoulder. And now pull the belly in. Pull the belly in. Look under your right armpit. I know lots of professors here and so on. I'm so sorry to do this to you. And now arch your back. Push your belly out and look over your right shoulder. Excellent. Stand up. Turn 20 degrees the same way. And bend, bend, oops, bend your knees down a little bit. And go down. Are you going a little further? Yeah, sit down, please. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great. Okay, you are doing fantastic. Look at you. Well, what? I hope this is still on. Yeah. What just happened? Well, you just proved to yourself that you have a brain <laughs> and that your brain can change. And let me tell you so very briefly s some of the principles, what I call the essentials, that uh, I, I, we used here. One is you moved with attention, something you just heard about. You moved with attention. Movement with attention changes the brain extremely quickly. The second thing, you slowed down. Third thing you did is you reduced the force. The fourth thing that you did is you brought a few variations. And the fifth thing you did is you backed off a little bit from your goal to give you freedom to experiment. These are five of nine essentials that I used to help the dancer in a few minutes, by the way. It took about six minutes for her to be able, for her brain to figure out how to move her legging legs, so to say, speak. And these are the same principles that I used over many years with Elizabeth helping her move from 
and overcome one limitation after the other to where she is today. Now, a, the muscles, just very briefly, just in the subject of stretching, are not built to stretch. Physiologically, it's not like it's crazy. Muscles are built to contract and decontract. When they're too short and interfere with our movement, it's because the brain is sending them a signal to contract at the wrong time. So we have to somehow communicate with our brain to change the pattern with which it organizes our movement. So these essentials do not get deceived by their simplicity. So the movement with attention, slow, a reduced force, variation, pulling back a bit from the goal. We use them daily to transform the lives. We work a lot with children with special needs, autistic children and, and, and cerebral palsy and genetic disorders, work with musicians, athletes, people like that. You take this into your life, you take this into your exercise, you take this into your thinking, your research, all these principles actually wake up the brain and give it the information, flood it with the information with which, it's, it, with which it can do its remarkable changes. It has enormous implications for education. If we, if we can take children that are really having a hard time learning to read, write, think, move, and get them all the way through college and get them to be actually extremely intelligent, imagine what you can do with it with intelligent people. It, it provides people back their human dignity. So just remember, leave you with that thought, that even on a bad day, you have an amazing brain. And when you provide your brain with what it needs to create and invent for you, it will do it at all times. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.